Hello there, I'm Eric Renault, and this is a video for tipsquirrel.com. It's the free website for all things Photoshop, Lightroom, and anything else we find interesting. In this video, we're going to look at boundary warp, both in Lightroom and in Photoshop. Now, if you prefer a written tutorial, you can find this over at the Photolia blog. There's a link on screen. Okay, let's jump in and see how it's done. So here I am in Lightroom and I've got nine photographs ready to go that make up a panorama. Now I can go up to photo and then down to photo merge and then down to panorama. Of course, I've got them all selected and they'll make the panorama. For now though, let's skip over to bridge. And you see, I've got the same nine ready. I'm gonna select all, control or command A, and then click on the picture of the aperture here, which will take me into Adobe Camera Raw. I'm gonna select all the images here, select all, and then go into merge to panorama. Now what happens next is exactly the same as what happens in Lightroom. I'm just doing it in Adobe Camera Raw. That's all the difference. Okay, we can see that the panorama has been made. I actually made this a little while ago, so it's remembered the settings and gone ahead and made that. It takes a little while, of course, to stitch nine images together. And what you can see here is that we've got this thing called auto crop. And what that's doing is detecting where the pixels are and then cropping within all the pixels so we lose all the dead pixels, which is great. If I turn that off, you can see then that that's where all the non-pixels are when it's all been stitched together. But what we're losing is some of the detail in the sky and also in the foreground, which we may not want. That's where this boundary warp comes in. If I click on that and start sliding it across, you can see that here in Adobe Camera Raw and the same in Lightroom, it starts warping it out to the edges. There we go. Now I reckon about 85 works well for this image, makes it nice and straight, but I'll go all the way to 100 just to fill in all the different pixels. So there we go. Just with one slider now, I can stretch it all out and include all the pixels that I captured at the time. Okay, I'm Eric Renault. That's Boundary Warp. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye for now.